What were some I can't believe I'm getting paid for this moments at your job. I write smut for a living. Every now and then, I write a line or get an idea for a story that's so ridiculously over the top that I genuinely have to take a step away from my laptop for a second and question exactly how it is this became my life. My personal favorite is the very nice email I got from someone who wanted me to commission me to write a story about him being sounded by a Hot Wheels car. He wanted the first half of the story to be about the car stretching out his urethra as it went in, in great detail, and the second half to be about the damage the car's wing mirrors did to his pee hole as it came out. I politely declined. Also love my job, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want to do anything else. It's just fucking odd sometimes. Dot. My old job deliberately gave us downtime when work was slow and wouldn't give us more to do till like 3. So me and my co-workers downloaded Left 4 Dead and played co-op lol. But then the bosses were mad we had so much free time like WTF you're the ones who decided to make it like this. Yay, the bosses don't necessarily care what you do as long as it doesn't look bad on them. Playing video games could certainly make it look bad on your boss if their boss showed up. Last few places I've worked have various levels of work from home. There's the I'm be at the beach and have my laptop WFH and the I'll be dialing into these five meetings WFH. As long as you got stuff done when it was needed to be done, they'd say just WFH next week and get this done and that's about it until the following week. Worked retail and had to sticker hundreds of items of clothing with little black sale stickers. Just as I'm finishing up, I was told they changed their mind and wanted me to use red stickers instead. So I went back over every item with red stickers. It was also a public holiday in Australia so I was paid to 5x my average pay, and spent 6 hours of my shift doing just that. Thanks god people are different in this regard. I think I'd go mental after an hour of applying stickers. Right fucking now, I work in a call center for a government body here in the UK. Since February, I've been paid £12 an hour to fucking sit here and do fuck all. I have taken personally, myself, since February, 6 calls. But shit I am bored. I used to make video content for social media to drive ticket sales for a major arts festival. I would go to the tech rehearsal for major operas, plays, ballet etc. I would be the full cast and orchestra performing as if they were playing to a full house but it was just me and my camera. I could move around to get the right shot. I could go backstage and interview the performers and whoever else was in my brief to talk to. I got to tour around with an opera once. I have no background in this. I'm completely self-taught and had only done really pedestrian jobs before this. It was amazing, I never would have wanted to go to an opera or ballet before this came along. If you ever have the chance to see something like this go. It's not as boring as you think it will be. In a past job, albeit a low paid one, I got to help raise a baby sea otter and one day I had the task of combing and fluffing up her fur to keep her waterproof and help her float. I was literally being paid to groom an adorable baby otter. Expos. They bought my department first class high speed train tickets to get there paid all food, rooms, etc. and let us wander around and see all the technology and innovations. Every customer or supplier of ours waved us into their booth, gave us beer, food, and free swag. To the expo, there was a company party on the expo floor in our booth, free food, booze, and seeing probably 90% of senior staff of our company completely hammered. Aside from that as a recent grad who had previously only had temp and part-time jobs, I'm still amazed I have paid vacation, and a lot of it at that. I work 8 hours a day. I actually work 20 minutes to a half hour of that. I read Reddit most of the day. Deleted. I was a photojournalist, getting paid to sit on the sidelines of major sporting matches, at the sound desk or in the pit of bands from ACDC to ZZ Top meet all sorts of interesting people and create a photo to help tell their story. I photographed John Cleese during a sound check, he went on a 20 minute rant about photographers, I had to ask him to stop as I was laughing so hard I couldn't take pictures, met Jackie Stewart and heard him speak about his time as a Formula One driver. It was an amazing job, and one I was very lucky to do for as long as I did, 
Some days I would think some people would pay to be able to do this. There were crap days too, sitting in the hot sun at a murder scene all day. Watching police bag evidence sucks, as does attending car crashes in the middle of the night, in the rain. But I remember the good days better than the bad ones. I covered two presidential elections, multiple natural disasters, and countless sporting events. I miss it, but I look at what journalism is now and then I quickly feel grateful that I'm not involved with that anymore. I once worked as a graphic designer for a well-known website slash Facebook page about movies slash series slash video games slash music, and sometimes I had to do very poor photo edits, like pasting a famous actor's head on the body of a cartoon character to illustrate the fact that this character will have this famous actor's voice in this movie, or things like that. I was asked to do the shittiest edit possible to make the post funny. After a while I was graphic designer at a now defunct culture slash politics blog with an intentionally crude and immature editorial voice. I definitely photoshopped Ben Carson lovingly cradling an infant with a Hitler mustache after he said he wouldn't abort baby Hitler. Not at my job, but I was once in a documentary of the miners' strike. I got paid to spend a weekend throwing fake rocks at fake cops, shouting at them. It was so much fun. I lucked my way into a test for a soon-to-open psychiatric hospital for criminals. Basically we had to make as much trouble as we could and try to break out and report back the flaws we found. Man that was a fun day. I lifeguarded for three years, so a lot. When it gets rainy and everyone leaves the pool, they normally keep us around just in case it clears up. We watch TV and raid the snack bar. We play in the pool sometimes and blast music on the speakers. Having a party with a bunch of cute girl lifeguards while getting paid by the hour equals not a bad gig. Can confirm currently at work as lifeguard. Git, no I am not on stand. I used to get paid to hack into companies' networks, for the longest time it was my I can't believe I get to do this legally and get paid stupid amounts of money for it. Then it just started pissing me off when I realized all the company's network security suck, many were hiring me for a compliance checkbox and when I'd come back the following year they hadn't done anything, in some cases not even change the damn passwords I used from the year prior. I now maintain a large list of companies I will never do business with using any type of credit card because I'm 100 and 10% positive it will be compromised if it hasn't been already. This seems like the digital version of I worked at this restaurant, and after seeing how they make their food I will never eat there again. A positive one. I get to teach kids how to play Dungeons and Dragons for 6 weeks every summer. Rolling into work dressed in an elf princess costume and getting to play a game for 7 hours a day it feels unreal. I'm still incredulous every time that direct deposit hits. Oh hey I can answer this one. I'm a dog trainer and we help dogs that are reactive to other dogs when on leash, I, E, hucking slash lounge at dogs when on walks, and one of the ways we do this is to drag a stuffed dog around, looks realistic, at a distance. You even talk to the stuffed dog, pet it, and pretend to feed it. All of this is happening while another trainer feeds the real dog anytime they see the fake dog. I've legit been asked if I'm crazy before until people figure out we are training a dog. Edit, wow. This is my most popular comment to date. For those wondering what this is, it is a form of behavior modification. To find trainers who do stuff like this try searching for trainers, remote or in person, certified through the Academy for Dog Trainers. I am certified through this organization and we get a very heavy dose of behavior modification for this stuff. Make sure the trainers are force free and positive and that they never punish a dog for reacting. The latter will never help and will only make things worse client wanted to do a small tenant improvement to their existing office space and had existing PDF drawings of the office building, floor plans, cross sections etc. I quoted the client $2000 for architectural permit plans which would include redrawing the existing PDFs in AutoCAD and then drawing the proposed plans. Before I started the task of redrawing the PDFs. I had the idea. I Google searched PDF to DWG converter. To my surprise there were many softwares that did this type of conversion. I managed to finish the entire project in about 5 hours. You're using AutoCAD, 
Attach the PDF to your DWG and use the PDF import command. It can convert the PDF into line work within your drawing. It doesn't work the best with hatching slash text, but it works well enough and can even import items into the right layers. I imported a floor plan once from PDF and it actually created an A-Walls layer with all the appropriate line work already assigned to it. Dot. So you might not even need third-party software, free or otherwise. Literally 70% of my time at work is spent sitting at my desk bullshitting around. Pretty much that. I'm doing a project right now that a drunk monkey could do with his hands tied behind his back. Microsoft Excel copy paste copy paste beep boop beep. Working in IT, getting paid to be a professional Googler basically. I'm not an expert, I just Google at a higher level. I sometimes use paint to alter screenshots of a technical drawings which I then paste into PowerPoint to add annotations and then print the whole thing into monochrome PDF. And you best believe we're changing big money for all of this. Also, we print every email. That last sentence hurt me and the planet. I'm a waiter and if there's a mistake or a takeaway no show we get to eat it. Often we get paid to stand around and smear pizza. Edit, wow, so obviously smear was supposed to be eat. Just wow, on your. Anytime a client takes me out for lunch or invites me to a golf or shooting tourney. But the craziest for me was when I was taken to a 4 hour lunch to a high end steakhouse on Warren Buffet's credit card. That was pretty dope. Probably the opposite end of the spectrum than intended but I work as a professional photo retoucher for a mid-sized e-commerce site that focuses on women's clothing. So one day I was going through and editing lookbook images, meaning we outsourced a photographer, got a more expensive model, and shot on location, and in order to know which images we have a spreadsheet which gives me an image number, a deadline, and editing notes which is something specific they want done to the image. This is where things getting interesting. I'm working my way through all of my edits when I come to an image number with a single editing note, remove horse genitals. Of course I think it's odd and kinda funny but only expect to maybe have to remove a couple equine testes. So I open the image. The model in a field sporting a yellow fluffy coat walking a horse by the reins, and a massive, fully unsheathed, red rocket hanging low. As I spent the next five minutes gingerly, and artfully, making sure this penis doesn't make it to the public I couldn't help but keep asking myself how tf him being paid to photoshop away a horse's dick. Edit, wow, my most upvoted comment ever is about a horse penis. Guess I'm the horse cock guy now. Sounds like an honest product review, could have left it in. This coat is sure to get a rise out of the stud in your life. I had to rub oil on a model's leg for a photo shoot. It was a positive I can't believe I'm getting paid for this. Mine are all pretty minor, but this is my favorite. Marketing has Max. There's a recall on a battery for the MacBook one guy has. In theory, I could have mailed it straight to Apple and they would mail it back. But instead I drove 30 minutes south to a computer store that would mail it for me. I ate Mexican food. I drove back. And then a week or so later, I drove down and picked it up. I did not eat Mexican because the call came in late Friday and I had already eaten. I got paid 2 hours plus mileage plus 1 lunch to deliver someone's MacBook to a store because they're too busy and important to do it themselves. And I am perfectly okay with that. When there's conferences in really nice or fun locations. It really struck me the first couple conferences I went to. So you're sending me to New Orleans slash Miami slash Hong Kong slash London, and I get my normal pay, you're paying for travel and a nice hotel, and I get per diem?